thank you very much. Uh, so I will just move uh, to open up the discussion. Uh, please feel free to address uh, any questions or comments. Uh, may I pose a question? Okay, um, thank you very much for, for uh, contributions in this uh, section. Um, I would have an immediate question for Carolina. Uh, and it was uh, very interesting for me to, to listen to your presentation uh, about Eva Partum and Gallery Address. And I would like to, um, I would like to ask you like for, for me, it was like uh, also interesting because I knew uh, and read, I have read some, some texts uh, uh, about uh, Kwiekulik uh, archive, uh, archive and their, actually their uh, semi-private institution and their um, activities between official and unofficial uh, culture. And uh, I would like to ask you whether you would have like a kind of like comparison or very, very brief comparison, like what would be from your uh, perspective, what would be the, the difference between uh, these two uh, institutions or, or I, I don't know how to call para institutions or, or semi uh, private activities. Uh, as, as like as you like. Uh. Thank you, thank you for that question. Yes, we are. Um, there is a lot of interesting um, research on Kulik, and I think um, I would define Galeria address more as an event, something that that um, takes place, um, and uh, it's constantly. Um, assembled, let's say, right? And that's why I'm also working with the notion of infrastructure because I have this um, kind of predilection of, of, of getting like precisely beyond these dichotomies and trying to think of material things and of conceptual things in a more, um, in a more um, uh, fluid way. So I think that um, Eva Partum always um, found the location outside of her own flat and then reassembled some exhibition there. So as we have seen, there were several uh, posters uh, and on each poster at gallery address had a different address. And um, also we are now still, when we are exhibiting gallery address archive, we continue the event modus operandi and we do open calls and people, different thematics, let's say, last one was the feminist and people are still participating. So it's, it's, it's happening again. Uh, and we do the exhibition from the new works that are being sent. And uh, so it's op this, this modus operandi would be more related to being an event, whereas quick colleague, they um, very, um, um, they, they define their uh, kind of strategies um, through the active subversive uh, engagement with the official um, with the official kind of apparatus and uh, they worked their pot boiler jobs and the pot boiler jobs became also a source for their art so it was the subversion the the the, the, the Basically, it was totally embedded in the in the um, in the system, whereas Everbertum at at places collaborated with the official institution. and other places, she moved towards different um, networks, uh, and I think this this institution wasn't in the same way uh, dialectically kind of embedded with the official system, look. and that's why maybe it's still somehow appears. Thank you. I, I have a question to all of us, if I may 
a part of me, of course, because we we are um, all of us, I think, as the industry, we are engaged in this curatorial and as historical, let's say, of, uh, working with the materials. So I wanted uh, us maybe to share a little bit this changing uh, a, a, um, kind of agendas or agencies. Um, yeah, how we work with this material. Shall I start or? <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I can try to, to answer uh, your question. It's it's very interesting question. And I think that uh, Mira Keratova touched this question in core, like uh, in her presentation, because there is uh, really in her work, the research and curatorial work is really overlapping. In my case, it's, um, um, in my case, I, I I think I I would I would share this position and uh, I I would uh, uh, really stress the necessity of uh, uh, of interpreting um, the art of sixties and seventies through uh, contemporary discourses. It's very necessary, and uh, I think it it could be proceeded through either theoretical discourses uh, that we uh, have today, critical theoretical discourses or uh, critical artistic discourses. Uh, my, my position in the Julius Kohler Society is, 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 is that, uh, that I'm, I'm dealing with the archive, I'm researching the archive and um, I'm mostly focusing uh, on Julius Kohler, but also on, on uh, other artists like uh, um, Milan Adamciak, Stano Filko, uh, uh, and others. And um, this research for me is, uh, is interesting from several uh, points. Um, uh, and um, uh, I think uh, one, one side is like, to um, to focus on on really the like scientific or uh, uh, scientific or theoretical research, but the other other side of it is really like in uh, like linking the archive and the practice of the artist uh, to uh, contemporary audiences, and uh, I think this is this is very important, uh, 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 and I think that Mira expressed it very very nicely that these, uh, most of these works are uh, rather ephemeral or uh, the studios, installations, works that used to be compact are now um, uh, dissolved in various places, various collections. And uh, uh, our goal is to, is to um, go against uh, the logic of of marketization and reification of this uh, of these um, um, uh, ephemeral uh, works. This is not to say that that I would avoid uh, um, work with uh, private gallery or private sector. Uh, rather, I would say that 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 uh, my goal is to is to focus on relating uh, the work of artist uh, of the artist and and his or her archive to uh, to contemporary discourses and um, uh, bringing it to to contemporary audiences so to search for uh, for the possibilities and this could be done of course various in various ways and um, it's also a kind of like responsibility for uh, for the artist uh, because uh, uh, and it's also very very hard uh, job to do because uh, once you are a researcher and you do kind of like objective uh, scientific research, uh, uh, it's uh, from from the position outside. It's very different from the position from inside. And once you are operator of the archive, or once you are part of this 
uh, this like artist's legacy. Uh, uh, it's it's a very different, difficult position and different from this the, from the previous one. So uh, I think that uh, sometimes I I really feel the the necessity to uh, for for um, uh, comparisons or comparative studies. And uh, that, that's why also I, this, this, this conference is uh, very important, like talking about uh, artistic communication and uh, like uh, uh, thinking or, or searching for methods, how we can, uh, how we can interpret and uh, think uh, uh, about this uh, progressive uh, legacy. And I think it's, it's really, it has really much to, uh, much to uh, address. Um, so I hope I, I I I answered the question. It's 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 very complex. And uh, uh, thank you for this question. But I, I think I I am not really able to to answer it in 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 few minutes. It's uh, but maybe I I did at least a, a part of it. Okay. Carolina, thank you for your uh, question. I can agree with Daniel that this one is a very complex one. And uh, in my case, uh, the research of album, or I came, came across the album uh, case uh, during our research with the team of uh, the research uh, team of the Academy of Fine Arts for the previous book. Uh, which was uh, based on the research of the history of uh, exhibition. So, uh, uh, and of course, uh, my turn, it's the researcher one, not the, not the curator. And uh, as I can say personally, it's uh, uh, really amazing to see how many or how number of research materials uh, showed today in uh, everybody's paper. Even the 70s seems uh, that they were under, the culture was really under the restriction. There, uh, as I mentioned in my paper, that uh, everywhere in Czech, uh, Slovak, Poland and Hungarian, uh, uh, there were many these uh, uh, islands or these, as I uh, talked, uh, as I mentioned, these uh, um, uh, autonomous zone of these huge uh, uh, um, curatorial and other activities. So it pleased me so when I saw your map of the Eva Parton's gallery. And of course, it's uh, good to make comparative studies, not even of our region, but also with the Western, as uh, 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 Piotr Piotrowski uh, claimed before, to make, uh, to write another uh, um, uh, horizontal histories of our region. And yeah, well, that's it probably. I'm not quite sure if I answer properly your question because it's, uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, uh, well, that's, it's probably, it's it from my side. Uh, I would like to ask you that time uh, one question because of this uh, album, uh, 76. Thank you very much for this presentation. It was uh, very interesting. I didn't know much about this, uh, this uh, album you have presented. Uh, and uh, my question would be if um, this Ostrava art scene uh, was, uh, if it was one, one state, Czechoslovakia, former Czechoslovakia, was it close uh, more to track art scene or to, to the Slovak one or to Brno or, or how do you see uh, this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this location as it was actually or was it uh, close more to, to Polish art scene maybe because it's located uh, 
actually fly near to the border. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think at first it was closer to Prague because of the personal contacts of uh, Ivo Janoušek. He uh, really, um, he regularly traveled to Prague for the exhibition at the, at the end of the 60s. And uh, these uh, uh, contacts to Slovak was uh, at first at the beginning of 70s and more uh, in, uh, in the middle of 70s because of his friendship with Eduard uh, of Čáček who studied in uh, Bratislava. And he connected uh, Ivo Janoušek with the artists in Bratislava and other places. And also this happened because of the compilation of album 76. The, the first one was only Czech, uh, uh, Czech uh, there were only Czech artists. So um, in that one of 76, it was compilation of both Czech and Slovak. And of course, the connection to Poland was uh, uh, in Czechoslovakia from the 60s. Um, there were uh, many not, I don't know if many, but a lot of exhibition of uh, Czech contemporary art in the 60s and it prolonged even in the 70s. Uh, probably uh, no, but uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, somebody who mentioned uh, Jiří Baloch uh, activity, a lot of uh, Jiří Baloch and other, other artists traveled to Poland to visit not only the artist studios, but also they were present at the Zof uh, Kulix and uh, Eva Partum activity, or they were invited, as uh, Carolina mentioned. And so these connections were uh, quite often as well. And of course, during the beginning of 70s, there were also connection to Hungary because of the Balaton Boglar, but most of them were uh, made by the Slovak artist. I think that, uh, yeah, that. So uh, as uh, the answer to your question, Andrea, I think it was like in the move. Uh, a lot of uh, Prague artists exhibited in uh, Ostrava regions because of the invitation of uh, Ivo Janoušek and the friends. And of course, they were part of the albums. Thank you very much. Uh, um, we have, uh, I think, uh, time for one last question. So please. Uh, yeah, please I, I just, I'm, uh, I'm not sure we can. <laughs> uh came to can, can come to a very eloquent conclusion on it i just wanted to raise the question of marginality and i'm sorry that daniel uh, had to leave because I, I was just interested if this whole ufo and uh, uf uh, cosmic uh, approach to to art was uh, any connected to, to um, identification with a kind of marginal geopolitical position. And it was really interesting that Carolina also mentioned this, how like decentralized networks uh, were one option, but uh, how Eva Partum uh, um, uh, mapped her activities, or at least how Yishivalo, or I don't know if it was who, who was the author of this map, uh, like conceptually, but that it was a rather an alternative center or uh, an alternative node, uh, I guess. Uh, and uh, so how marginality was embraced or over-identified or, or what, whether it was kind of opposed and, uh, and if there was a need to create alternative centers or nodes. And I think it's, it's also interesting in connection with Dagmar's uh, uh, case study uh, that like um, how, how um, uh, the, the Hungarian and the East, East Berlin presentation was uh, cancelled because of, uh, partly because of Carta 77, but also Dissident Biennial, which was a very kind of 
uh, a central event um, and um, uh, th there are documents on uh, on how artists related to this uh, and uh, East European artists uh, uh, many of them were critical of uh, being showcased as dissidents. And it's really interesting if uh, album, album uh, 76 came to dissident biennial with the knowledge and the agreement of the participants, or it was just a copy that was uh, kind of uh, uh, appropriated for this purpose. Because I know that like, um, uh, the archive of Radio Free Europe uh, also um, uh, um, borrowed works for the exhibition and there were also western collectors who, who gave work to the exhibition and the artist probably or in in many cases did not identify with this idea that their art would would be presented as uh, uh, as dissidents and not like as conceptualist or whatever or modernist or abstract expressionist or <laughs> what, what they they did otherwise so I don't know if you, you can uh, share more details. <laughs> Uh, no, but, um, unfortunately not, because it's, um, as I mentioned in my paper, it's not still uh, clear if the album or some of the lists were present in Venice. And uh, it's probably uh, one of the copy was uh, given to uh, Genevieve Benamou, who was the st student of history of art in the 70s in Czech Republic. And she uh, took the album to Paris. But uh, it would be necessary to uh, study the materials in the archive of uh, Venice Biennial or the archives of the security service, because even uh, Jana Gerjova and I think uh, Clara Kampfelsch and the uh, others, uh, Tomáš Pospíšil, who wrote about this uh, dissident biennial, no one uh, mm, uh, was sure if the album was really exhibited. It's a mystery. And <laughs> mm, I uh, only researched that uh, the probably part participating artist realized that they were part of the BN biennial because they were uh, investigated by the security service after that. So they um, uh, criticized this even in, uh, I think, newspapers and uh, they were against, as you, as you said, Juja, uh, that uh, they want to be called dissident. And, yeah. May I just add that Giza Pernetsky was also there at the dissident biennial, and I'm not sure I never tried to check, but he is kind of describing the exhibits uh, mm -hmm. in a detailed way. It's mm -hmm. a very long text. Um, so um, it, it okay, he, thank he you. <laughs> also be a source, but of course, uh, not a completely reliable source because it's always oral history. And, and everything playing their role. And may I just just one one very short question to Mira that um, it was very interesting, like in the case of white space in white space that it was mostly presented in in Eastern European um, venues. And uh, oh, I know that the documentation was circulated a lot in the network. But is there any kind of program behind this or was it just accidentally so because it's really interesting like how these networks were focused on one or another direction and uh, well sometimes programmatically sometimes uh, how just the life <laughs> came uh, or how, how, how it happened oh, you are muted uh yeah i think uh uh, all of these uh, presentations, what I was showing, have had some somehow the outcome in a publication, or 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 not, or in case of Filko, he was elaborating documentation like photo documentation and so on. So he was definitely uh, distributing it via mail and so on, for sure. But um, uh, as in a format of exhibition, this was not really, but of course uh, there were difficult circumstances. So this was not really apart from this Castle Documenta then, 
situation, but uh, within a documentation, I think this was uh, kind of circulating. Uh, so, uh, but uh, also uh, this project has really like uh, uh, decades of development as, as Philco then appropriated it and turn it into, in fact, already a bit something else than it was initially, but at the same time uh, promoted it very much through his further activities and further, uh, further elaborations. So, uh, so then uh, later on, of course, uh, already 90s, but uh, also then the story like was cut it by Filko's emigration, Milos Lucky died uh, at the already, early 70s uh, and Jan Zawarski was uh, started to focus on scenography so it was also not only because of geopolitical situation but very like a personal fate of all this of these people involved uh, so yeah probably so the, this is the explanation that it was uh, going on in 70s early 80s already feel emigrated no one else like there was no further agent to, to promote it during 80s. So then it came back in 90s and it was very much also revised by uh, art historians and theoreticians. And uh, I just wanted to um, that, uh, contribute to, to this uh, uh, question or answer about, which is really very interesting. And I think this would be, uh, something for or it's not or i mean it's it's something what is not researched systematically about the political affiliation of all these people because uh definitely uh what i didn't uh further talk about for example peter bartosz this is like such a environmental you know uh politics uh what he was going on and uh, also other type of uh things uh, all together they're very very contemporary in many ways and but the, all these people either Filco or even Kohler I don't think they themselves identified with certain uh, leftist let's say politics etc and it, it was um, many cases like that uh, I think this was uh, this this left also even people in dissent in at least in Czechoslovakia they were going, uh, they were following just very particular, even around in the charter 77, very particular political programs. And they were, they were just part, often uh, this descent was identified in Slovakia with the church or, 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 or in generally with a non-conformistic kind of scene or, and so on. So, uh, this is like, a, there, there was very specific situation and uh, from historical point of view, as far as I know, this is, uh, this period of 70s is regarded as very conservative with the start of neoliberal politics and so on and huge conservatism beside economics, uh, the regulations starting to run and so on, but uh, on the level of diverse identitarian politics or diverse other like uh, human rights uh, fields, uh, uh, this was somehow not 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 developed within further discourses, not neither within art scene very much in here. So what uh, we have here such examples like what I was about to talk as well, like about this Jan Bude, for example, which is nowadays a minister of uh, uh, environment in Slovakia. So he he stopped to do art uh, after 1989, but. Um, he was doing like very political art, but this was like a really direct critique of the system, direct and, and particular features of that. It was not framed into some kind of, even though it has really big anarchistic features, big like it has anarchy, it had anarchistic features. Uh, it was not uh, consciously formulated in that time in this way uh, or conscious, yeah, so articulated. Let's say so. Uh, it 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 was somehow existing in a sublime way. Let's say it's kind of diverse political approaches. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think um, 
we are finished for today. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all these very interesting contributions and also for this very interesting discussion. And uh, I just uh, would like to turn attention to our website, project website. We will update it uh, regularly so everybody can see about the new activities uh, within this project. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, see you soon, maybe in Budapest or in Strat or in Fortnite. Bye bye. May I just announce that the date of the next event is uh, 11th and 12th of uh, May in Budapest, and we'll advertise this. And uh, we, we will also dedicate this conference to the memory of Laszlo Becker, who was a very important inspiration for us. And I, I just wanted to thank uh, Hannah and Mira and Dania that uh, you reflected on the, the current situation, because I think our project mm -hmm. is also very important uh, as an artistic mean to, to uh, raise solidarity uh, within uh, this com complicated region. So I just wanted to add this and thanks Andrea for <laughs> managing this uh, throughout the You're whole welcome. day. <laughs> Thank you very much. So see you tomorrow, all team members. <laughs> And thanks, Jofi uh, Kokai, who was also managing uh, everything today. Uh, so thank, thank you all. Thank you all, too. Have a nice day. So great. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.